Howdy y'all, welcome back to my RB14A build down here in Austin, Texas. So here I am taking my trim tab out of my uh, jig that held it while the pro seal was drying. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't record the riveting of the trailing edge, uh, read the plans, uh, so it's not too bad. Um, just kind of have to stack it so you can keep the trailing edge parallel to your back plate while you're riveting it. So. Once you get done with the uh, trailing edge, go on and rivet in the, the gusset. Just a quick couple of rivets, no big deal. A couple of 470s that you can easily put on with a squeezer. And after that, then you start working on the rib tip uh, or the, the tip assemblies. So, this riveting wasn't too bad. I looked at a couple of different methods, either using my longer on yoke, uh, a regular yoke, or just saying screw it and using a bucking bar. Uh, I came up with uh, screw it, using use the bucking bar. So, one thing I did do when I was riveting this is, if you look carefully, you'll see a little red tip on the end of my rivet gun, and that's actually a rivet sock, um, which helped me stay on the head of the 470 rivets, so I didn't pop, hop around, uh, prevented any smileys. Um, very useful. I think I got them at air, aircraft brews or something like that. Um, but yeah, they just go over the end of your your set, and it helps you stay on those 470s. About a while ago, this is the first time I actually remember to use them. Um, very handy to have. Come two different sizes for the two different sizes of 470s that you're, you're likely to run into. Um, but I just used that sock and, you know, a bucking bar and just bucked them in. going through bucking them in and measuring I don't know if you can hear that rocky running around in the background here so I finished up one assembly switch over to the other assembly um, one of the other things I found uh, there is a couple of flush rivets you have to do in this assembly and what I actually end up doing was I took my squeezer because my flush set is too big to get in the corner uh, to flush rivet. So what I actually did was took my squeezer with a flush set on a longer on yoke uh, and then kind of assembled it after I got it over everything because with the sets in I couldn't get it over the two flanges. So I took the sets out got the yoke over the two flanges and carefully assembled the sets into the yoke and then I squeezed after that. So there's a little few tricky spots but nothing horrible to overcome. There I am and getting the flush rivets. So that's a lot. Well, <clears throat> I guess I just shut off the camera or a battery died. So I didn't get actually the squeezing of the flush rivets with the longer longer on yoke. So here I am just bucking the rivets in on the other side. The other thing I discovered when I get to the end of this is I'm looking forward to the next section of plans is there's a reinforcement plate, the uh, E910 reinforcement plate. Um, hadn't touched it before. Um, and so in the next step after I get this all riveted together, 
Yeah, there I am with the longer on yoke, putting the sets in, getting everything set up, and then just squeeze the two rivets in. But I had to go get that reinforcement plate, uh, deburr, and then I need to prime, and then I'll be back at it. So that pretty much wraps it up for the day. Thanks, y'all, for watching. Bye.